in this video, I'm going to just go through and review how the envelope works relative to modulating the filter cutoff. There's been some a few questions that people have had about that. So I'm just going to go through and demonstrate how that works. If after this video, things are still a little unclear, go back and watch the filter and filter envelope video that was published with the free series. And that'll help put things in more of a diagrammatic perspective and then come back and rewatch this video again. Well, first, one thing that Zebra has, if you look at these, some of these knobs have a dot, dot, dot by them. What the, like this one here, dot, dot, dot on the noise. What that does usually, in almost all cases, that is a knob that will modulate the parameter next to it. So in this case, if I wanted to modulate the filter cutoff frequency on the noise generator, I would use this parameter here. I would left click on that knob and it would present a pop-up menu here where I could select a source for modulating, which in this case I might say, well, let me do an envelope or the modulation wheel, that type of thing. But before I do that, let me, I guess I can use noise for, for this video. You know what? I think it might be better. I guess there's two ways. If I do it with noise, then we're going to hear a lot of noise sweeps in this video. So I think what I'll do is do a couple examples with the noise, and then I'll select, I'll bring up an OSC1 as well when we get to that point. So first, let me just demonstrate with noise. So right now I've got a cutoff frequency key follow. I'll bring that to zero. Drive, I'll bring that to zero. Let's go back to the LP12 filter type here. This is a low pass, 12 dB per octave filter. And if I increase that cutoff frequency, if I wanted to modulate that, I would select either one of these. Both of these knobs end up modulating the filter cutoff frequency. Okay? So if I select ENV2, I can have ENV2 modulate that filter cutoff frequency. So I'm going to start with an attack, decay, sustain, release, pretty much everything zeroed out. And what that will do is have, in effect, no modulation occurring of the cutoff frequency. Now, if you recall from the earlier video where I explained how the ADSR settings work for modulating the volume, I'm going to start with the sustain and in this case, for the filter cutoff frequency, instead of being the sustain envelope setting, and instead of it being a volume level, like it is up here with ENV1, it's not a specific cutoff level in that sense where sustain is actually the volume. So if I turn sustain all the way down on ENV1 and I play this, that decay setting here caused it to reach attack, it reached its maximum volume. Then over the decay time, it dropped down to the sustain level, which is zero. All right, so that's why it faded out like that. If I play it again, all right, if I bring sustain level up, I'm still holding the note down. So it's sustaining at this level while I hold the note down, and then as you just saw, I released the note, and it dropped to zero over this release time here. Well, sustain with the cutoff frequency is different, all right? When you're modulating the cutoff frequency, it works differently. Sustain is actually an offset that's applied to the cutoff. So if my cutoff is here, and in fact, yeah, we can leave this envelope one settings where it is. but I'll bring decay to zero so that we sustain at the same level each time I hit the note. So if I bring sustain up, it's actually going to be applied based on this ENV2 amount. Right now we're not modulating this at all. So if I bring ENV2 up, in fact, I'll just bring it up to maximum for now. Because we have everything zeroed out over here, it's not affecting the cutoff. It's not modulating the cutoff. But if I bring that sustain level up,
you heard how it affected the sound. And so what it's doing is it's being applied to, it's being added to whatever the cutoff frequency is set to here. And the amount that this affects the cutoff, like the degree to which this affects the cutoff, is determined by this modulation amount over here, this ENV2 amount. So if I bring this back to zero, and I'll talk about negative in a minute, but for now, we're just focusing on the positive. So if I bring this to zero, ENV2 amount is set to zero, then no matter what my sustain is over here, it's not going to affect that cutoff. It's not having any effect. So what I'll do is I'll just leave sustain about halfway up where it is now. We'll put it at 50. And then I'll show you how increasing the ENV2 amount affects Alright, so this is a small amount here, so this will cause EMV2 to modulate the cutoff frequency by, let's just say, a, a small amount. And now if I sweep this sustain level, between half and zero, you can see and hear how much that affected the cutoff frequency. Now if I bring ENV2 up all the way, we are modulating the cutoff frequency by ENV2 by a much higher amount, a much larger amount. So now the same range of values of sustain between 0 and 50 will have a much more, uh, a much greater degree of effect on that cutoff frequency. So that went all the way up before when I had EMV2 down in this area. A sustain of 50 ends up being over here. So you just kind of have to fine tune the, the nature of that based on what you're trying to do. But that's how it works. All right. Now, let's look at attack, decay, and release, okay, in regard to modulating the cutoff frequency. So to make this even more uh, evident, I'm going to bump up the ENV2 amount slightly. And if we look at attack, let's look at attack first. Attack is the time it takes for the cutoff frequency to go from its initial value to a maximum value. And then once it hits its maximum value, it will drop to this sustain level, all right, while the note is held, okay? And it will take the decay time to drop. All right, so, so with zero decay, this is how attack would function. In fact, what I'll do is I'll bring the cutoff. We'll start with a lower cutoff here. In fact, I'll bring sustain all the way to zero. So now this is the cutoff that we'll be working with. So what happened is over the attack time, it went all the way to maximum cutoff frequency. So basically it did this. Let me remove ENV2 from modulating the cutoff and I'll just do this manually to demonstrate what effect the ENV2 is doing. So if I had that attack, at let's say halfway, and we'll go full ENV2 on this. All right, so what's, let me go with a longer attack. Okay. So what just happened is the attack setting with EMV2 modulating the cutoff basically did this, and I'll, I'll demonstrate it here manually. Okay. Now, if I wanted to do that with the envelope, I would basically start the cutoff at zero. Well, actually, I'd leave it at at the max because that's where it's sustained when I was holding the note down and do something like this.
And in fact, I'd have to start at zero on the cutoff and then sustain, have maximum cutoff over here on the envelope. All right. So now what we can do is say, well, what if we had our sustain level back at zero? So we're going to start at zero, go up to max, and then drop back down to zero again. Well, we that's what we would use the decay for. The attack basically gets us from wherever we're starting from, based on the filter cutoff setting, up to the maximum cutoff frequency. And then once we hit the max, that's when the decay stage starts. So if I wanted to go up to the attack to maximum and then drop back down to whatever the sustain level is set to then I would have a decay setting like this or make it even longer okay All right. Now, the only other thing to talk about is the release, and that happens when we stop the note. And we stop the note either when the MIDI note stops or when we lift up on the key on the keyboard. So, what I'll do is I'll just start hitting the C note. And let's go ahead and have a fast attack so we get right up to the maximum. And we'll have zero decay, fast decay. And let's sustain at the maximum and let's set our note release high and then that will allow us to, to hear this filter release So I'm hitting the note here. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, instead of using noise, if I use an oscillator, and then just return these back to zero again. So now by increasing that attack, it takes some time for the cutoff to reach its maximum level before it decays to the filter cutoff plus the sustain offset. And it's plus because we have positive envelope modulation over here. So basically the cutoff frequency is starting here and then based on that attack setting it's increasing from here up to its maximum level which would be here. Okay? Which would be 150 which based on this low pass filter type. All right, now if I set the, let's go with a faster attack, let's set the decay up to about halfway, and then we'll have the cutoff, well, it doesn't matter where the cutoff is, but I'll have it lower now, and then what'll happen is we'll start at this cutoff over this attack time, it'll go to its maximum value, then it will decay to whatever the cutoff is over here on the filter plus the sustain value, which in this case is zero, so it'll just go back to this original setting, and that's where it will stay. So let me do that again. Now I've got a higher cutoff. All right, and then if we wanted to have it sustain slightly higher, we could bring up the sustain level. Let's have it sustain there. 
And then when I release the note, we can bring the release up and bring the release up on the amplitude envelope. So this controls how long it takes for the cutoff frequency to go from wherever it is in the envelope stage when the note release occurs back to its original value right here. All right, so that covers the envelope modulation. And the only other thing left to talk about is the negative. Okay, we've dealing with positive. Let's go to negative. If we go to negative, then everything just flips. All right, and instead of the attack, decay, sustain, release stages stay the same, but instead of this sustain offset being positive, being added to the cutoff, it's actually subtracted from the cutoff. So this would allow us to say set the cutoff here and go from this value lower. All right, the attack actually governs how long it takes instead of going from its initial cutoff value here going to a maximum value it goes to a minimum value all right so let me demonstrate that so I'll set decay to zero sustain to zero and release to zero and we'll start with a high cutoff and because we have negative envelope modulation the attack is going to control how long it takes to go from where it starts which is based on this cutoff frequency so in this case we're starting at the maximum value and, and going all the way to the minimum value and the reason it went high again is because of my sustain value so if I want to sustain it at the minimum I have to apply a maximum offset here So in fact, in order to demonstrate that, let me, let's see, if I hold the note down now, okay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to, I've got negative envelope modulation, so that means the sustain offset is going to be applied negatively to whatever this cutoff value is. So if I hold a note down, that will allow me to demonstrate how that sustain is affecting it. As I go up, more and more negative offset will be applied, which will actually end up driving the cutoff frequency down. So watch this. And that's because of that negative envelope modulation. All right. So just familiarize yourself with that. And then if, you know, give it a shot, try it out. See if you can come to grips with and understand how this negative envelope modulation works with, well, first deal with the positive because it's the easiest to understand. And then experiment a little bit and work with the negative. And, and then if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll see you in the next video.